Are you ready, Pop? Yes. Okay. Hi. I'm Mary, the mom, and this is a girl, a book, and a mom. Okay. So today let's talk about my July reads. I know I'm a little late. Uh, August is always kind of a funny month for me because school starts Monday. I that it's we barely get half a month and then it's back to the drudgery of that's not the right word the back to the super fun that is teaching high school students math anyway uh so the first week of August uh we went to this beautiful VRBO and um stayed in the mountains of West Virginia and it was lovely and Pepper came and gnawed on my brother's dog a little bit. Uh, so, anyway, let's talk about uh, the July books. Um, the July books were all library books. So, I, I have none of them with me. So, I'm just going to put them right up here. Um, and today's wine, which I discovered while we were staying in West Virginia, is... Josh Sellers Chardonnay. There you go. Hope you can see that and it's in focus. It's a lovely, delicious, crisp wine and I'm enjoying it thoroughly. So, let's go through this nice and quickly. Uh, the first book I read was How to Fail at Flirting by Denise Williams. I gave this four stars. It's a story of a uh, professor at a college whose department is getting kind of like, um, who is dealing with some relationship drama and picks up a guy at a bar, which is not something she usually do, does, does. And um, I like that both of the protagonists are damaged in their own way and they have some witty dialogue and uh, the the silly jokes is on par, is on fleek. So I gave this one four stars. It was a nice, fun read. Um, yeah. Uh, the second book I read was Haunted Hibiscus by Laura Childs. I have it written down. Um... <laughs> And I gave this one four stars. This was recommended to me by my librarian. I filled out a little survey and they picked a bunch of books for me. So uh, it was good. I had no idea who the killer was until it was revealed. Um, this is a story about a woman who owns a tea room and her boyfriend is a cop uh, and somebody gets murdered and then somebody else gets murdered uh, and she's amateur sleuthing it, a la um, uh, Angela Lansbury in Murder, She Wrote, except she's not a writer. She's just nosy. Um, okay, so that was four stars because it was cute and I had no idea uh, who did it. My mother also read this and she said that not only did she have no idea who, who did it, but she thought they were just thrown in at the end as like a extra character. So whatever. Uh, the third book I read in July is Insane City by Dave Barry. Uh, and I gave this three stars. This is a story of a guy and his posse of groomsmen, him and I think it's three guys. And they're going to Miami for him to get married to this girl that he thinks is like way out of his, uh, reach. Um, and, uh, way out of his league and it just falls way way into the crazy train I mean there's there's a chimpanzee and the girl is a total bridezilla like makes me type a personality I'm not even a type a personality I'm like type a plus personality uh, it makes me look like I wasn't a bridezilla. Like, this girl is just psycho. Um, uh, but it's, there's so much going on, and 
it, like refugees and pirate ships and it gets a little silly like i think it got a little too silly like jumped the shark too silly so i gave that one three stars the fourth book i read was seven and a half lessons about the brain and i picked this one up it's by lisa feldman barrett and i picked this one up because i don't generally read books of essays and um this was a book of essays about the brain and it was uh fascinating um and i really enjoyed it i learned a lot and so i gave it four stars um then i uh, then I got the book, I Survived the Nazi Invasion of 1944 by Lauren, can't read my own writing, Tarshish, maybe? Uh, it's a graphic novel, and I thought it was okay. It presented the material, Surviving a Nazi Invasion of Poland, um, in an accessible way for younger readers, and uh, the girl read it twice. Uh, so she loved it. I thought it was okay. I decided to give it four stars. And with that, we have gotten through one, two, three, four, five. We have six more to go. Time to have a little sip of the nice, cool beverage. Because it's been crazy hot outside this week. What are you going to do? Uh, the sixth book I read was The Invention of Hugo Cabret, and uh, this was a beautifully written and beautifully illustrated story. Um, it's a middle grades fiction about a boy who is an orphan, and we find out later, very much alone. Um, and he likes to tinker and build things and he has a beautifully sad story and um it turns out that the random people that he meets in the train station where he lives also have a beautiful story and i love this it's the invention of hugo cabret by brian selznick and uh, i gave this five stars because it was Oh, so, oh, it was so good. Just wonderful, wonderful story. Um, relatively happy ending. It is a middle grades book, and it has won the, the Caldecott Medal, I think, uh, for its illustration. So it was um, terrific. So that was my five star for the month. Uh, the next book I read, also a library book, was Fairmont's Fermat, if you speak French, or Fermat, if you grew up in the Midwest going to prestigious Midwest universities, you pronounced it Fermat. Uh, but anyway, Fermat's Enigma, the epic quest to solve the world's greatest mathematical problem. Uh, this was written by Simon Singh, who also wrote uh, The Mathematical Secrets of the Simpsons. And... Um, it's one of my five-star predictions, so I'm not going to tell you what I rated it or what I thought of it, but I read it. And uh, I will make a video later about this one. Uh, the seventh book I read was The Answer Is Reflections on My Life by Alex Trebek. Um, this was a really quick read. It was um, Alex Trebek's memoirs, and it was... Uh, I think it was written shortly before he died because he was talking about um, being on, on quarantine and lockdown and um, yeah, and he he's already dead and we're still dealing with this pandemic from hell. Um, anyway, I gave it four stars. It was really interesting and I learned a lot about his history and about what went into his life and Jeopardy. Um, but it was written as a bunch of anecdotes. And I think I would have more appreciated it if it was more of a cohesive story. Uh, but it was very interesting and I enjoyed it. Um, okay, the number eight book that I read was called Unmarriageable by Sonia Kamal. I gave this one four stars. 
This was a retelling of Pride and Prejudice in modern day Pakistan. And um, given that the names were totally silly, like um, Mr. Mr. Darcy, D-A-R-S-E-E, -E, was the guy who was supposed to be the Mr. Darcy, D-A-R-C-Y person. So that was really silly that most of the names were kind of lined up like that. Um, but uh, this was a re retelling Pride and Prejudice, and um, I... I thought, although that sometimes it seemed a little contrived, that it really offered an interesting perspective on the role of women in Pakistan. And I think, and I'll have to reread it again, which I don't mind, I think Pride and Prejudice was also commenting on the role of women in England at the time that it was written. So I think that that parallel was really interesting. And honestly, I had no idea about Pakistan. So I, I found that whole cultural aspect of it uh, really interesting. I also like that they talk about food a lot um, because I love Indian food. And if I want some, I have to cook it myself because we don't have an Indian restaurant, much less a Pakistani restaurant here in the middle of absolutely nowhere, Ohio. Okay, so... The 10th book I read was Float Plan by Trish Dollar. Uh, so there is a trigger warning for this book uh, for death by suicide. And it's about a, a woman whose boyfriend buys a, a sailboat and refurnishes it and then kills himself. Uh, and so she decides to take the journey and... Uh, she hires someone, Keen, I think that's how you pronounce his name, to help her sail the boat. And uh, Keen is dealing with his own situation that he's got a, a, a prosthetic leg. And so they, all, they both have uh, grief that they're dealing with. She's grieving her boyfriend uh, and has been for a year. And he's grieving his missing limb. Uh, so it's really a good story until the end and then it's totally rushed and it's like what the hell just happened come on now and then it's like really rushed and you're like wait what so the end could have been improved the first two thirds totally awesome and then the last third it fell apart uh so i give it three stars um it was enjoyable i liked it but i do wish that the and had the same kind of uh, depth as the first two parts. That's rough. I mean, it wasn't like part one, part two, part three. But it was kind of like, here's the story, here's the story. <laughs> done. So that done part could have been developed more. I wouldn't have minded a longer book. Um, and the last book I read is my buzzword challenge for July, which is the last bookshelf, the last bookshop in London, a novel of World War II by Madeline Martin. And I gave this one five stars. I had originally given it four, but I switched it to five because of all the books I read this month, besides Hugo Cabret and Fairmont, Fairmont is um it's a book that most stuck with me it's about a woman and her friend that moved to london shortly before the onset of world war ii and she begins to work in a bookstore even though she knows nothing about uh, books and it's it's london through the blitz the bombing blitz and um and she deals with um her own privilege and it, it basically is the story of how uh, literature and stories keep people together. And um, I really enjoyed it. I gave that one a five star because um, upon reflection, I, I just really enjoyed it. Uh, that it's, uh, 
I, I seem to have read a lot of World War II books this year. And um, this one... I mean, this one, there was war. It, it brought the war close to home and um, and characters you love don't make it through. Uh, but it was the survival and the community and the love of the people who were struggling together that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, so anyway, that's what I read in July. I know we're almost halfway through August, but, oh, August. Not my favorite month. General Malaise. No, that's not right. It's not General Malaise. It's, I have to read this book, and I'm going to do a book review just on this book. Okay? Um... That this is my assigned reading for the summer because my job insists that I have assigned reading because I'm a teenager I don't know but let me tell you something if you are writing a nonfiction book and you want to talk about moments in school that are boring for the love of God and all things holy Pick something other than math. Like, don't act like English class never has a boring month. Have you ever diagrammed a sentence? Jeez, oh, Pete. We have to draw the line and the noun and the verb and the line and then down here. Yeah, boring AF. This book says multiplying fractions are boring. I find multiplying fractions really interesting. Mm. Math does not get its place in the sun often enough. Anyway, I will be reviewing this book whenever it is I finish it before Monday. I am 30% of the way through. Okay, anyway, what was your most memorable book in August? Or in July? July, July. How has the summer been for you? Got any fun books I should read? Book recommendations not about World War II, please? I think I'm done with World War II. Any suggestions for wine I should give a shot to? Anyway, hope you're having a great day. Stay safe. Stay safe. Happy reading.